sur les premières semaines, il y a eu ce petit problème. Il y a été en surpoids et Guardiola, lui, il ne déroge pas à ses règles. Non. Ils were not overweight, but I want my players fit. And uh, for me, the weight is so, so important. Everybody knows just how badly Yaya Toure and Pep Guardiola get on. Pep got rid of Yaya at Barcelona and Manchester City. But no one really knows why their relationship is so frosty. Happily, you're all about to find out. May 8th, 2008. Yaya Toure had been at FC Barcelona for a year. Signed for $12 million, he'd already demonstrated his talent and had all the makings of the Catalan club's next star. He'd had a good first season at the club under Frank Rijkaard's command. But things got complicated when Pep Guardiola arrived. The Ivorian gradually saw his playing time reduced. The reason was simple. The new coach of the Blagranas preferred to use the young Sergio Busquets. The relationship between Toure and Guardiola was far from being peachy, but to succeed, they couldn't go without one another. Because while Yaya was a talented and solid player, Guardiola was the tactician who transformed FC Barcelona. In 2009, the club season was completely incredible. Barca achieved a historic sextuple. And as a symbol, Toure played an important role in the Champions League final. He agreed to help out his team by playing as a central defender. And yet, he never understood why he was banished for so long. Even when Busquets was absent, Pep preferred other players instead of him, like Seydou Keita. After two years of a difficult relationship, the midfielder reached the point of no return. When he got the chance to leave Catalonia, no one stood in his way, especially not Pep Guardiola. He basically ignored me until City's offer. I didn't talk to Guardiola for a year. If he'd spoken to me, I would have stayed in Barcelona, but he didn't believe in me. 80 games under the Spaniards' command, Toure headed to England. He was looking for a new challenge, but also freedom. Et Aya, clairement, il quitte Barcelone pour aller à City. C'est quand même un choix assez surprenant. Tu vois, c'est facile de dire qu'il est parti pour l'argent. Mais ouais, Yaya, il vient, ouais. Yaya, il vient pour amener City très, très haut. In 2010, Manchester City were viewed as new money in England. For Toure, it was a bold and daring bet. But there was real unease behind his separation with Barca. The Ivorian had struggled to support his coach. He even said that Guardiola was very strict and other players ended up hating him. He was very manipulative and he messed with your head. Guardiola is very proud and he wants to succeed with his players. Succeed, but at what cost? Pep Guardiola is known for being very demanding, but his appetite can sometimes be a detriment and makes him lose the humanity which is so important for a squad to function. Like Samuel Eto'o before him, Yaya Toure often pointed out these shortcomings in the Spaniards' management. We looked at each other strangely. He turned around without saying anything, to look at me, to assess me, but without speaking. He knows that I speak Catalan, Spanish, and English, clearly not enough to communicate with me. When we crossed paths, he seemed embarrassed, as if I'd ruined his day, and as if he'd realized that I'd figured him out perfectly. This tension created friction and increased the number of disagreements. That's a big reason why the Ivorian decided to take another path. A path that Pep would also take a few years later, with the opportunity for the two men to get off to a better start. With time, Yaya Toure became unstoppable for Manchester City. And when Pep Guardiola joined the club, he didn't forget to remind him. I know Yaya from a long time. Uh, uh, he did very, very well in Barcelona and here as well. So it's a huge, huge talent and uh, of course all the players are here right now count on me. Would the two men restart at zero? Would they finally collaborate with less aggro? It's a good question to ask. City fans hoped the answer would be positive. Because on paper, under Guardiola's philosophy, Yaya Toure could play a key role. 
When he arrived at City, he told me that he needed me to guide the younger players. I had options to leave, but I could become a citizen legend. He asked me to stay. Maybe he was scared of losing control of the locker room if I left. Guardiola, il arrive dans une période où ça fait déjà six ans qu'Yaya est là-bas. Mm. Euh, Yaya, il a une relation qui est assez bonne avec le président. Donc ça, c'est des choses. Tu... Ouais, il, tu dois gérer ces choses-là. Ouais. Tu vois, Yaya, il est important, il est influent dans le vestiaire. Tu vois. Ouais. Despite the importance of Yaya Toure in the locker room, Pep Guardiola arrived at Manchester City as the Messiah, someone who would win the club the Champions League. Manchester City rolled out the red carpet. He was now the boss. Guardiola, c'est quelqu'un qui aime son équipe. C'est lui qui te donne ton poids de forme, par exemple, tu vois. On termine la pré-saison, c'est lui qui te donne ton poids de forme. Donc, si toi, tu penses que ton poids de forme, c'est 69 kilos et qu'il te dit que non, ton poids de forme, c'est 64. Mais si toi, depuis 6 ans, tu es à 69, comment tu descends à 64 kilos, tu vois. Mm. Mais lui, il te dit que c'est 64. Et tant que tu descends pas à 64, tu joues pas. Les premières semaines, il y a eu ce petit problème. Yaya était en surpoids et Guardiola, lui, il déroge pas à ses règles. In public, Guardiola denied talk of the players being overweight, but talked about optimum weight. No, they were not overweight, but I wanted my players fit. And uh, for me, the weight is so, so important. So we need to run, we need to fight, we need to jump, we need to hit the ball. And, uh, And when you are not fit and your weight is not properly, uh, danger is coming. And uh, they are not faster enough, quicker in the head enough. And that's why I want to be my players absolutely fit. Things heated up again. Another Guardiola and Toure quarrel. The midfielder immediately lost his place as a main player. What else could I do as the coach didn't want to play me anymore? Week after week, I tried to manage my frustration. I asked myself how I could keep such self-control. But I always was exemplary in training and I never disagreed with the coach in the locker room. In two seasons, he only played 48 games. The situation was unbearable. Et en fait, c'est une équipe depuis six ans qui tourne autour de Yaya. Ça veut dire qu'en fait, quand, quand on doit gagner, Yaya joue numéro 10. Et quand on doit défendre et qu'on doit garder le banc, Yaya joue en sentinelle, tu vois in the blink of an eye, Guardiola ended Yaya and City's relationship. Is Pep Guardiola the only one to blame? Did Yaya Toure try to back down? We don't know. What we do know is they never formed a bond. Toure even made serious accusations about the Catalan. He was cruel to me. I even wondered if it was about my skin color. At Barca, some people asked the same question. Maybe we, the Africans, weren't always treated like the others. The Ivorian had always tried to overlook this feeling, but he didn't forget that Samuel Eto also had problems with Guardiola, and his suspicions grew after Wilfried Bonny was sent away. We often saw that he had problems with Africans wherever he went. I wondered about it. I didn't want to believe it until this season. Despite these accusations, the coach has always been supported by his players. He also said he didn't have any problems with African players. Yaya Toure seems to have never liked playing for Pep Guardiola. Not on a sporting level, but for human reasons. For him, Pep likes to dominate and have obedient players. The Ivorian never got to grips with this kind of relationship. I respect my coach, but I'm not his possession. The midfielder didn't have to end his career or the celebration that he hoped for. After everything that he gave to the citizens, Toure hoped to leave out the main entrance with his head held high, but Pep Guardiola kicked him out the back door. And clearly, Yaya Toure has never forgiven him.